Hey, and welcome to today's class in week 10 on critical thinking, cultural differences, and the challenges faced in considering different cultures in our classroom and ensuring equality, avoiding discrimination, and applying our understanding of diversity of cultures to faith and education. As an opening exercise in this class, I encourage you to think about using the phrase culture, thinking, cultural differences, education, and typing this into Google and Google Scholar and seeking to find some further information for yourself about the nature of culture and cultural differences and the ways in which this can influence your teaching and your approach to education. Read through some of the findings and reflect on how these different cultural influences will influence the ways in which people think and the ways in which people teach. From this lesson, we're seeking to recognise the importance of understanding the diversity of the cultures in our classrooms and what this means for us as teachers in showing kindness, avoiding bias, speaking and thinking well of others from different cultures and ensuring that we recognise the differences of the cultures of the students that we are teaching. It's important for us always to understand that there are different cultures, and therefore it's important to begin by thinking about some of the different meanings of the term culture and what this means for us in thinking and education. We want to recognise the importance of valuing culture and cultural differences in people from different cultures and valuing the cultures and all that these represent. And we want to use this knowledge in order to better understand one another and to teach more effectively. Let's begin with a couple of Bible readings. Firstly, 1 Corinthians 12. Just as the body is one, just as the human body or the physical body is one with many members, and all the members are part of one body, so too it's us in Christ. That is, by one spirit, we're baptized together, whether we be from a Jewish culture or a Greek culture or a slave culture or a free culture. We drink and participate in the one spirit of God that gives us life. If the foot should say, because I'm not the hand, then I don't feel part of the body. Or if the eye should uh, say, um, I'm not uh, the ear or the nose or the hand. Um, or if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. That doesn't make it less a part of the body. And so too, every person, irrespective of gender, irrespective of cultural background, irrespective of age, irrespective of our differences, we all have a contribution to make. We're all valued because we're made by God. As the Apostle Paul writes in Galatians 3.28, in Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female. We're all one in Christ Jesus. So today, we want to take the opportunity to reflect on the meaning of these truths for us as we teach and as we think and write. Let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we do pray that you would help us to be more effective in our teaching, in our lives, in our ministry, in our opportunities, through our increased awareness of the difference between one another in terms of culture. Amen. So in your forums for this week, week 10, you're asked to watch and read some videos, including the New South Wales government video on the ways in which an understanding of cultural difference, racism, helps us develop strategies to avoid racism and exclusion in our classrooms. There's also Moodle resources that I'd encourage you to take the time to read and watch in order that you might become more effective in understanding culture, cultural differences, and the best ways to respond to these. If we consider the students in our classroom, it's important to recognise that many of them will come from various cultures, different cultures, and even within one cultural group, there'll be many subcultural groups. For instance, if we were to take a typical class, then we'd find that one in three speak a language other than English at home. One in four, English is an additional language or dialect 
and one in 12, Aboriginal, one in 72, refugee. And then there can be other cultural backgrounds according to the background of your parents or grandparents and the background of different members in the family. Teachers and students can benefit greatly from efforts to understand the nature of various cultures and the diversity of cultures in the classroom. And in order to encourage students to be more supportive of those who come from different cultural backgrounds. Efforts to understand and appreciate the diversity of cultures in classrooms can lead to a more inclusive and supportive learning environment, and it can enhance learning outcomes of the students as they feel valued and feel their cultures are valued. And by learning about different cultures, teachers and students can develop a deeper understanding and appreciation of the beliefs, values, and traditions of people from different backgrounds. And when teachers and students understand and appreciate these diversities of cultures, this can lead to increased cultural awareness amongst everyone amongst us and increased sensitivity to these cultural differences. And by incorporating diverse perspectives and awareness of different experiences in classroom discussions and activities, teachers can provide a more well-rounded, engaging learning experience for students from lots of different backgrounds. Cultural differences influence the way people appreciate thinking and critical thinking also. That is, some from a more modern, reductionistic, scientific culture can focus on modern, reductionistic scientific approaches that can be quite different to traditional First Nation approaches or quite different to Asian or uh, Eastern approaches. So people from different cultures, some may emphasise group harmony, others may emphasise individualism. Some may emphasise avoiding conflict, others might emphasise direct communication. So each culture can have different ways of approaching thinking and each has value and each has strengths and limitations. And it's good to consider these as we think and even personality differences can reveal different approaches to thinking and each has its strengths and limitations that we need to be aware of. Cultural norms not only influence the way individuals perceive evidence, assess credibility, evaluate arguments, they also make us aware of different ways we approach authority figures or age or logical reasoning over more traditional approaches to understanding. So it's important to note that critical thinking skills can be developed by balancing an understanding of the Western approach to an emphasis on logic and reasoning with the more Eastern approach of valuing family and authority and group thinking as well. Study of history also helps us to understand how cultural developments change over time and how in the West we've come to the position where we emphasise a strong emphasis on logic and individualism over some of the other cultures and backgrounds, each of which has its strengths and limitations. The key points to remember in all of this is that culture is complex. People have different ways of approaching knowledge and education due to their different backgrounds and also due to different personalities. It's also important to remember that culture is not the same as personality or family identity. It has to do with this much larger group sense of identity that people participate in. Culture and meanings of culture are widely contested. And the value of different cultures is also widely contested. And in our classes, we need to value all of the different cultures represented amongst our students in order to value all our students. It's important to remember that culture influences perspectives and identities of the students and us as teachers in our schools. And so it's important for us to better understand our students' cultures and our cultures as teachers. Cultures do adapt and change as people migrate, transition across the generations and change where they live. Culture can also be expressed in different ways, can be expressed through different words, artifacts, objects. And cultures not 
defining people since every person is unique and different, but it's defining more general approaches to behaving and thinking. I know if you're like me, there have been times where you felt you've been valued by a teacher, where you have felt you connect, where you felt you're a part of what's going on, and there are other times where you feel left out. And sometimes this is due to you resonating with the culture of the teacher. I encourage you to pause the video today and to reflect on the ways in which language, cultural values and topics have made you feel more included or excluded. And also to think about the ways in which you as a teacher have made students to feel more culturally included or excluded. Write down some of the ideas that you could incorporate in your classroom to encourage students to be more included. Think about what are some of the different dominant cultures in your class, in your school? Some people in classes are more focused on the outdoor, the active sport. There's a sporting culture. Others may be more focused on the creative or the academic. Others more on junior, others on secondary school. Each of these groups or subgroups in our school have different cultures and teachers and students may exclude or include one another by focusing on the different cultures. Take time to think about the ways in which your actions and words encourage students from different cultures or the ways in which they at times may exclude students from different cultures. How do we find these different cultures in the world around us, if we think about it, there can be cultures related to age or race or ethnicity or gender or socioeconomic status or religion or sexual orientation or disability or cultures themselves. Think about the ways in which our schools can be inclusive of people from these diverse backgrounds or at times exclusive. And in analysing the cultures of different groups or organisations or schools or classrooms, it's worth thinking about what can we see about the layout of your classroom, the dress codes, the ways we speak, the artefacts. That is, some classrooms have got pictures of artworks or musical instruments. They're the sort of things they promote. Others may have pictures of sporting heroes or scientists promoting other cultures. The challenge is to be inclusive of all cultures. Some may promote people of different ages. Some may promote people from different socioeconomic statuses. There's all sorts of differences that we can promote or exclude. Different cultures, too, can have different values. And if you don't feel valued in a culture that promotes the norms, sometimes there can be a promoting of uh, that which is a counterculture that seeks to give people a sense of identity. Another way of looking at cultures is to use a culture wheel that considers the way in which we use language in different ways. We tell stories, share knowledge in different ways. We share traditions and rituals in different ways. We share different techniques and skills, whether it be a modern scientific approach or whether it be a more traditional First Nation approach. We use different tools and objects. We celebrate different arts and music and painting. We celebrate different foods and drinks. We celebrate different values and we have a different sense of community. All of these different approaches to culture can be played out in different ways. And it's important for us to be sensitive to the different cultures of our students. How can we do this? Take a few moments to reflect on ways in which you can increase the participation and value that's given to students from different cultures. Certainly one thing you can do is to listen to students about them, about their cultural backgrounds. Another is to celebrate the different cultural backgrounds. Give opportunity in your class for the students to talk about their different cultures, of which we all have some cultures from our parents and grandparents, from the ways in which we've grown up that we can share with one another that can be valued. 
and look for opportunities to share the value of the different cultures that we have. You might have a particular day where different students and parents can bring along different foods that can be celebrated, different pictures or different stories about their background in order to promote the different cultures that are represented by your students. Certainly culture is related to language and each group can have different language backgrounds, the ways we can communicate, uh, individualist or uh, more of a group communication, courtesies that we share one with another, rituals, roles, customs, relationships, practices, expected behaviours, values, thoughts and manners of interacting. So it's important to understand the cultural values that we have and the lenses through which we each view the world. There's no view from nowhere since we all have a view that comes from the cultures that we live in and the backgrounds. As a starting point, it's worth reflecting on what the word culture means in that it comes from the word to cultivate, to develop um, the ideas and values that we have. Just as we nurture plants, so too we can cultivate the values that we have in our society. And over time, over the last five or more centuries, the term culture has come to represent the values that we have in society. The German word, Geist, means human existence and intellectual enlightenment is shaped by the culture in which we exist. And through the Renaissance and enlightenment, there was the development of the value of Western cultures, of advancement and progress, which is a particular set of cultural values which can vary from and be different from the more native cultures of people around. So in the Western tradition, the values that we hold exist within particular cultural perspectives and historical backgrounds, and these can differ from other backgrounds as well. You might want to reflect on the meaning of culture for you and others around. Culture can also mean the different ways we look at the world, the different values that we hold about the world, the different views we have on gender and socialisation and relationship one with another. And teachers can benefit from a deeper understanding of these different relationships so the students who come from different backgrounds and relationships can also um, be valued in terms of the different ways they relate. For assignment three, you're asked to look more deeply at a number of different cultures and the ways in which they are similar to or different from the culture of you as a teacher and the ways in which you can be more effective in teaching students from different cultures. And in order to do this, I encourage you to think further about the meaning of culture and what it means for you in your teaching. In order to better understand culture, it's also worth reflecting on worldview, the ways in which people from different backgrounds see the world in different ways. And worldviews are like plans or foundations or frameworks in which a person's view of the world around them is shaped. Worldviews often correspond to the big questions people ask about the world, such as what is real, what is true? an ontological understanding of the world. And so in contrast to the Western view of the world, the Eastern view of the world has different perspectives on the ways in which we see and interact with the world around us. Different ideas about where we came from, explanations of the past and origins. Worldview also relates to different explanations of where we're going and models of the future different explanations of what is good and bad, about actions, what actions are going to be most effective and uh, what actions are going to be less effective. What's true, what's false, epistemology and theories of knowledge and where we start to get answers from. A Christian worldview will often uh, look to the Bible or tradition 
or it can also uh, look to reason and wisdom and logic, and it can also uh, look to intuitive sense of what is right and wrong and conscious. Whereas a more scientific view of the world will focus on logic. Uh, a more native view of the world might focus on uh, looking at the world around us. There's similarities and differences between these. In looking at the nature of ultimate reality, we might ask, is the world primarily material or spiritual or relational or a combination of these? And in the modern Western culture, there's often an emphasis on the material world and measuring it. This can contrast with other views of the world, and there's value in each of these. What about the nature of material reality? Did it come first? Is it all that is there? Or are there other aspects of reality that are also important? That is, if we look at a house, is it important simply to measure it and describe it? Or is it important to consider the architect and the builder of the house? When it comes to the human being, are they mainly physical or are they mainly biological? Or are they created in the image of God with value given to them by God? Or are they just a machine or are they part of a chaotic world? Our views of each human person can be shaped by our worldview. And these in turn can be shaped by the cultures in which we live, that we participate in, that we read about and that we are a part of. Views of a person's life after death can be shaped by their culture and their, this can influence their worldviews. How it's possible to know things through relationship with others, through individual um, thinking. All of this can shape our understanding. Even our understanding of the passage of time and history can be shaped by our worldview and our culture. According to Charles Craft, the worldview explains how and why we expect things to happen a certain way, and it validates the goals, the institutions, and the values that we have. And you might be able to understand some of the different influences on you and what you have held on most tightly to as core value in from your culture and that which you've questioned and wrestled over as well. And students in your class will also be wrestling over what's core value, what's most important to hold on to, and that which is of lesser value. N.T. Wright says the real shape of someone's worldview can often be seen uh, in the actions that they perform. And so too, if a student behaves well or misbehaves, it's important to think about what culture is shaping that, what worldview is shaping that, what are they thinking? And it's worth asking them about why they do certain things and listening carefully to the reasons for their actions. We see from a Christian perspective in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and the New Testament, in the Passover, in the temple, these are part of a particular culture that flows through into New Testament times. And then after New Testament times, we see this throws through the history of the Christian church through the centuries. Kierkegaard and others before him, Abraham Kuyper, used the term worldview to express the Christian realisation of culture based on Christian beliefs. And so for Christians, there's a very strong belief in the culture that's been handed down to us from Jesus and the Bible and from our tradition and from guide leaders over time. And it's important to communicate and share these core values that we have with others in a caring way so that others can appreciate the reasons why we value the worldview that we hold and the cultures that we're a part of. The concept of culture includes many aspects of our life that we unquestionably, subconsciously accept why we do things the way we do. It's like the pair of glasses that we wear. Culture is not just about the ideas that are helped by our groups that we're a part of, but it's how we say things, how we go about things, and people in your class may do this differently because they come from different cultures. There are views about high culture, where people come from a certain set of values that can differ greatly from more working class or mainstream or popular culture, and this can be reflected in music and arts and publication and media. And you might be able to reflect on some of the differences around you and what values and cultures you hold most dearly and why you 
hold them and how this can differ from other teachers and other students in your classroom. Remember too, there can be a bias in our subconscious to favor those cultures and worldviews that we've been brought up with and how these can differ from those of people from different backgrounds. Critical thinking should also consider the different cultures that are part of our thinking process and how this can lead us to be biased in favor of one particular approach to thinking over another and one particular scholar's views over another or one particular um, student's views over another. And it's worth thinking about different localities and communities that you're involved in, such as education or church or youth or family, and the ways in which these can influence your thinking. Empathy is important, whereby you can feel for the different people who come from different backgrounds. Christian Smith said it's important to recognise that we not only are part of a larger culture like uh, evangelical Christianity or Western world, but we're also part of subcultures which can, in fact, um, withdraw from one another and form a sheltered enclave at war with other cultures. One of the dangers is the Christian groups or particular cultural groups can see themselves as separate from and at war with other cultures. Another view of Christianity or any culture is status of content, where we feel we've been left out because our particular culture doesn't have the advantages of another culture. Another theory is strictness, that if we're stricter about our culture and within our culture, that could cause us to thrive, but that's not always the case. Another is the competitive market theory, which says that different cultures compete against one another. Christian Smith says the subcultural identity theory helps us to understand that people from different cultures may see themselves competing with one another, embattled with one another, withdrawing from one another, contesting with one another in various ways. But the important thing in our schools and classrooms is to develop strategies whereby we can get on better with one another. And the way to do this is to listen to one another, to value one another, to celebrate cultural differences. In chapter seven of his book, Christian Smith asks, if evangelical Christians and culture are so strong, why do they have so little success? Often it's because their particular culture may in fact withdraw from or see themselves at battle with it, other cultures rather than working together with them. And the same too can be true um, for our students who are Christians who see themselves at battle with one another or any particular culture seeing itself battling with one another rather than working together with one another. And these ideas on evangelicalism as a separate culture come from Christian Smith's book, American Evangelicalism, Embattled but Thriving and thriving. And uh, you can explore that further if you want to know about this particular religious group, evangelicalism as a culture that sometimes doesn't do so well because it battles with other cultures. Different cultures are often found in different places. For instance, the cultures of the East and the cultures of the West have different views of power and distance. And there can be different degrees of avoidance between one another. And you might want to think about how avoidance or engagement can be viewed in different cultures, in different countries and different parts of the world. Some parts of the world, like the East, can be more collectivist, whereas some parts of the world, like the West or the USA or Australia, can sometimes be more individualistic. And they may see power in different ways. It's worth thinking about. And the Bible and church history shows that uh, through history, different cultures may view power and distance in different ways, and this can play out in either positive ways or more challenging negative ways according to the ways in which culture is viewed. Conservative Christian responses to culture, some like fundamentalists may withdraw, 
Others may seek to engage. Others may hold a more complex middle position where we want to differentiate between the values of the external cultures, the modern world, and that are good and those that are not so good, and we might want to evaluate them. So there are different ways in which we can respond to cultural differences. Some respond by isolating, some by accommodating, some by contextualising, seeking to understand the activities in each culture in terms of the context of each culture. Take a few moments to think about some examples of people from a particular culture who isolate and whether that's beneficial or creating difficulties. Those that over-accommodate the culture, and there could be negative aspects of culture that people might accommodate to, that can be dangerous. And then there can be contextualising, where people think through what's the context of these different aspects of culture. Tim Keller writes about and warns about those who are separatist, who withdraw, like Christians might withdraw from other cultures, and then conversionists who seek to convert people to their own culture. And then there can be those who are more political, who see change in culture coming about through politics. Perhaps one of the most famous resources written on culture and Christianity is Richard Niebuhr's Christ and Culture, which says that Christians often respond to the cultures around them in a number of different ways. Some act against culture, others, and you might be able to think of people and organisations that act against a particular culture. Others see God and Christ at work in culture and they just adopt culture. And you might be able to think of examples of the Christ of culture position, which see God and Christ at work in the cultures around them. Some see Christ above culture, in which Christ and God hold values that are far above and much better than the cultures around them. Others see Christ and culture are paradoxes that are working towards different goals and different aims. Most importantly, Richard Niebuhr says it's important to see God and Christ bringing incredibly great values such as love and hope and forgiveness that can transform culture. Culture has values, but Christ and God can bring transformation for good to culture. And this is the view that's been held by many great thinkers through time. So in today's class, in this brief introduction to culture and thinking, we've sought to briefly introduce you to the theme of culture, some of the main ideas about what culture can mean, and how differences in culture can be expressed in the different backgrounds of different teachers, including yourself and different students, and how rather than contesting different cultures, wrestling with different cultures, if we listen to and appreciate and value the different cultures as a gift from God, we'll find that, that students will be able to value one another more, teachers will be able to value one another more, we can learn more from one another. Certainly through church history, we've seen that even within Christian groups, there have been those who've contested one with another, wrestled with different values. But in the long run, it's important for us as educationalists and in churches and schools to understand the differences of the cultures around us and the strengths of them, and also to stand up and recognise if there are values within a culture that aren't healthy, we need to express that and we need to recognise that. But within all cultures, there are um, truly valuable expressions of the freedom and gift of God to express who we are within the backgrounds that we have, the traditions that we have, and the cultures that we have. So I encourage you in thinking about teaching and education to listen more to the different backgrounds of the students who are in your classroom, uh, to look for opportunities to celebrate the different cultural differences, and then you'll find that when students 
have a greater sense of being valued, a greater sense of their culture being recognised, that they'll be more willing to participate in the educational values that you're wanting to communicate and in the educational culture that you're a part of within the school. I wish you well with your reflections on the culture that you're a part of and the ways in which this connects with the cultures that your students are a part of. Thank you.